Let's work on this problem. Calculate the density of carbon dioxide gas at 42 degrees Celsius at a pressure of 1.7 atm. So what equation can we use to calculate the density? Well, let's start with this equation, the ideal gas law equation. PV is equal to nRT. Now, what we need to do is we need to replace n with something. n is the number of moles. And that's equal to the mass divided by the molar mass. The mass is in the unit grams. The molar mass is grams per mole. So when you divide grams by grams per mole, the unit grams will cancel, giving you the unit moles. So I'm going to replace N with the mass divided by the molar mass. Now don't confuse this with molarity. If you want to, you can write it as MW for molecular weight. Now I'm going to multiply both sides by the molar mass. So I'm going to have PV times the molar mass is equal to MRT. So now let's divide both sides by the volume. And so on the left, its pressure times the molar mass is equal to m over v times rt. Now density is known as mass divided by the volume. So I can replace m over v with the density. So the pressure times the molar mass is equal to the density times r times the temperature. Now to isolate d, let's divide both sides by rt. So the density of the gas is equal to the pressure of the gas times the molar mass of that gas divided by R T. So that's the formula you need for this type of problem. So now let's plug in what we have. The pressure is 1.7 atm. Now we need to calculate the molar mass of carbon dioxide. So that's carbon plus two oxygen atoms. The atomic mass of carbon is 12.01, and the atomic mass of oxygen, which you could find it in the periodic table, that's 16. So 2 times 16, that's 32. And 12.01 plus 32 is 44.01. Now let's replace R with 0.08206. And the temperature, it's 42 Celsius, but we need to convert that to Kelvin. So we got to add 273 to it. So 42 plus 273, that's 315 Kelvin. 1.7 times 44.01 is 74.817. And then if you multiply... 0 0.08206 by 315, you should get 25.8489. Now let's divide these two numbers. So the density of this gas under these conditions of temperature and pressure is 2.89 grams per liter. So this is the answer. So now you know how to calculate the density of a gas. All you need is the molar mass of the gas, the temperature in Kelvin, and the pressure in ATM. Let's move on to number two. What is the density of nitrogen gas at STP? So how can we find the answer for this one? So first, what's the molar mass of nitrogen gas? The atomic mass of nitrogen is 14.01. And after multiplying by 2, this will give us the molar mass of the N2 molecule, which is 28.02. Now at STP, what is the temperature and the pressure? The temperature at STP is 0 degrees Celsius, which is the same as 273 Kelvin. And the pressure is 1 atm. So we have everything that we need in order to calculate the density using the same formula. 
It's pressure times molar mass divided by RT. So P is 1, M is 28.02, R is 0 0.08206, and T is 273. So if you take 28.02 and then divide it by 0 0.08206, and then take that result divided by 273, you should get 1.25 grams per liter. So that's the density of nitrogen gas at SDP. Now it turns out that there's another way to get the same answer. So what you can do is start with a molar mass, 28.02 grams per mole. Now at SDP, you need to know that one mole of gas occupies a volume of 22.4 liters. That's the molar volume. So we can write one mole over 22.4 liters. And you want to set it up in such a way that the unit moles cancel. And now we have the units for density, grams per liter. So it's just going to be 28.02 divided by 22.4. And so you should get an answer of 1.25 grams per liter for the density of nitrogen gas. So both ways work. You can get the same answer. You just got to pick the method that suits you. Now, what happens to the density of the gas if the temperature is increased? Now, what about if the pressure is increased? What happens to the density? So, looking at the formula, D is equal to PM over RT. Because the pressure is in the numerator of the equation, the pressure and the density are directly related. So, if you increase the pressure of a gas, the density of that gas will increase. Now, notice that the temperature is on the bottom. So it's inversely related to the density of a gas. So if you increase the temperature, the density will decrease. But if you can increase the molar mass, if you can choose a substance that has a higher molar mass, the density of that sample will go up as well. So the density of a gas is directly related to the molar mass of a gas and the pressure of that gas. But it's inversely related to the temperature. Let's work on this problem. The density of gas XYZ is 1.5 grams per liter at a pressure of 2 atm. What will be the new density of that gas if the pressure is increased to 6 atm? So we said that if we increase the pressure, the density will increase. So if you double the pressure, the density will double. If you triple the pressure, the density will triple. So the pressure increases from 2 atm to 6 atm which means that we increased it by a factor of 3. So therefore, the density should increase by a factor of 3. So the new density should be 1.5 times 3, which is equivalent to 4.5 grams per liter. Now, we're going to use an equation to confirm this answer, because sometimes you may not receive numbers that are nice as the ones laid out in this example. So we're going to write a ratio, D2 divided by D1. So D, we know it's PM over RT. So I'm going to say it's P2M over RT divided by P1M over RT. Now, I only wrote a subscript for pressure and not for the molar mass or the temperature. The reason being is we're dealing with the same gas, gas XYZ, so it has the same molar mass. That doesn't change. There's no indication that the temperature changes, so we're going to assume that it's the same. And R is constant, too. So therefore, we're going to get this equation. D2 over D1 is equal to P2 divided by P1. So if you have a question that only deals with density and pressure, this is the equation that you could use. D1, we're going to say it's 1.5. We're looking for D2. P1 is 2, and P2 is 6. So what we need to do is cross-multiply. 1.5 times 6 is 9, and that's equal to D2 times 2. So we need to divide both sides by 2. 
9 divided by 2 is 4.5. And so that's the new density. So if you need to relate density and pressure, this is the equation that you need. Now what about this one? The density of an unknown gas is 1.4 grams per liter at 300 Kelvin at a certain pressure. What will be the new density of that gas if the temperature increases to 600 Kelvin? So what do we say would happen to the density if the temperature increases? If the temperature goes up, the density will decrease. So that means if you double the temperature, the density will decrease by a factor of two. If you triple the temperature, the density will be one third of its original value. So in this example, the temperature increases from 300 Kelvin to 600 Kelvin. So therefore it was increased by a factor of two. 300 times two is 600. So therefore, to find the new density, we need to divide the original one by two. 1.4 divided by two is 0.7. So that should be the new density of the gas. But just like the last example, we're gonna come up with an equation that will help us to confirm this answer. So let's write a ratio between D2 and D1. So D2 is gonna be PM over R times T2 because the temperature is changing. And so D1 is gonna be PM divided by R times T1. So we can cancel PM and we can cancel R. So right now we have D2 divided by D1 which is equal to 1 over T2 times 1 over T1. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by T1. So these two will cancel. T1 divided by T1 is 1. And here I have T1 over T2. So T1 over T2 is simply if you take T1 over T2 and divide it by 1, it's still equal to T1 over T2. So now I just have this equation. D2 divided by D1 is equal to T1 over T2. Now, if you don't like this method, you can also simplify it another way. So let's start with this portion of the equation. 1 over T2 divided by 1 over T1. Our goal is to use another method to prove that it's equal to T1 over T2. So we're dividing this fraction by this one. So we can rewrite it as 1 over T2 divided by 1 over T1. And hopefully you heard of the expression keep change flip. Keep the first fraction the same, change division to multiplication, and flip the second fraction. 1 times T1 is T1. And on the bottom, we have T2 times 1, which is T2. So this whole thing simplifies to T1 over T2, which is what we have. So this is the equation that you need if you want to relate density and the temperature of a gas, assuming that everything else remains constant. So we're looking for D2. D1 is 1.4. T1 is 300 Kelvin. If this is D1, this has to be T1. They correlate to each other. T2 is 600. So we got to multiply. If we multiply 300 by 1.4, that's 420. And so that's equal to D2 times 600. So now we could divide both sides by 600. 420 divided by 600 is 0.7. So as you can see, we're going to get the same answer. But if you have nice numbers in the problem, then you could just use this method. If not, you may have to just use the equation. But hopefully these two examples show you how to come up with the equation yourself based on what you're given in the problem. But anytime you have two fractions separated by an equal sign, to solve the missing variable, you need to cross multiply. Now let's consider this problem. If the density of helium is 1.5 grams per liter, what is the density of oxygen gas under the same conditions of temperature and pressure? 
So notice that the identity of the gas is changing, which means the molar mass is changing. So we need to come up with a relationship between the molar mass and the density. But let's see if we can get the answer without using such a formula. Now helium has a molar mass of 4 grams per mole. Oxygen is going to be 16 times 2, which is 32 grams per mole. So as we switch from helium to oxygen, the molar mass is increasing. So what happens to the density of a gas if the molar mass goes up? Based on the equation, we have D is equal to PM over RT. Because M is on the top of the equation, it's directly related to the molar mass. So as the molar mass goes up, the density goes up with it. So density and molar mass are directly related. So if we increase the molar mass from 4 to 32, what should be the new density of the gas? Now 32 divided by 4 is 8. That means we increase the molar mass by a factor of 8. So the density should increase by a factor of 8. So what's 1.5 times 8? 8 times 1 is 8. 8 times 0.5 is 4. So 4 plus 8 is 12. So the new density should be 12. Now let's see if we can confirm that with an equation. So let's write a ratio between D2 and D1 just like we did before. So this is going to be PM2 over RT divided by PM1 over RT. So we can cancel the pressure and we can cancel RT. And so D2 divided by D1 is going to equal M2 over M1. So we're looking for D2. D1 is 1.5. The molar mass that corresponds to 1.5 is 4, that's for helium. And M2, which relates to O2, that's going to be 32. So just like before, we're going to cross multiply. So 1.5 times 32, how much is that? 32 times 1 is 32, and then half of 32 is 16. 16 plus 32 is 48, and that's equal to 4 times D2. And 48 divided by 4 is 12. So the density of oxygen gas is going to be 12 grams per liter if the density of helium is 1.5 grams per liter, assuming temperature and pressure remains the same. Because if you change those conditions, then the density will change as well.